This screencast is on the long run aggregate supply. We're going to look at the determinants of the long run aggregate supply. We're going to look at the um, output and then also when we are below or above the full employment output. So when we're talking about the long run aggregate supply, remember in the beginning when we were talking about the Keynesian model and how John Maynard Keynes had said that wages and prices were sticky and that they um, really didn't move in the short run part of the aggregate supply curve. And then as output increased, you have the intermediate where you had the short run aggregate supply start to go upwards. Well, now when we're talking about the long run aggregate supply, we are focusing instead now on the vertical portion of this graph. The LRAS is the vertical classical model where you have the wages and the prices are fully flexible. And so what this means is that output is not going to change. You have a perfectly inelastic um, LRAS and so as the price levels increase beyond this point you have it where output is going to stay constant and this would be the uh, full employment output that potential output any output that is before or after it has some some type of output gap and so again, when we're figuring out the long run equilibrium, we're looking at that intersection of the AD and the LRAS, and that's giving you that real GDP output labeled here, YF. So when we talk about then the shifting of the long run aggregate supply, this is where we're looking at everything is uh, changeable and flexible, you know, in the beginning, the only thing that was um, able to really change were just little things in the short run. You didn't have the inputs and the capital being flexible with changes. But in the long run, everything is flexible. And so when we look at the things that will impact it and the things that will change, um, you have your factors of production, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. If the quantity of them, if for some, some reason they find more, they're able to acquire, and this is able then to shift out the long run aggregate supply. It's sustaining. It's not like just um, all of a sudden uh, something new is found. This is something that will sustain it. The other thing is the change in the productivity or the quality of the resources. Now, I think this one is really something you have to be careful with because productivity is also a determinant of the SRAS, but you need to think about things in long run versus short run terms. The short run productivity or quality of the resources would be where it, w it is where you need fewer ones in order to be able to produce more. For the long run, these are like major changes that are going to always continue on. And so human capital investment, the new way that people are doing things, where they are able then to become more qualified, and it's an all-around thing. It's not just like um, a few people are changing and becoming more productive. That would be more of a short-run adjustment. And then the last one here is technology, which we should always think will shift the LRAS to the right. But if you have some issue with technology, that technically could decrease the LRAS. So when we talk about the full employment output, that again is that yellow dot, no, that again would be where the LRAS and the AD are intersecting here in order to give you this full level of output. But what we have here now is something called the recessionary gap. And what happens with the recessionary gap is that you have it where the output is below it. So this output gap is causing us not to reach our full potential. And so what has to happen is that the aggregate demand curve 
needs to shift to the right up until the yellow dot here in order to get to this full employment level. And so this is where it's important for you to remember the different components of aggregate demand, the C plus IG plus G plus XN, because those are the things that can impact and shift the aggregate demand curve to the right. So when you're thinking about a recessionary gap and needing to get from a lower output level up to the full employment output, you need to increase the aggregate demand curve up until this point here where the AD2 would intersect the LRAS. And when we look at the different categories, you have here consumption, investment, and net exports. In government spending, obviously it would be an increase in the government spending. Um, but when you're looking at the consumption, these are the different components that go along with it. I think some of the things to really think about here would be like interest rates because that would then, if they decrease, then that would allow consumers to be able to take out more loans, to be able to buy more things. Um, the MPC and the MPS, they go together. So if one's going up, people are consuming more, that means that they're saving less. So these are just some different things to think about, consumer confidence, psychology is huge in economics, and so this is where you can see the impact with that. These are some of the different things that go along with investment, and again, this now on the business side here is also where if interest rates go down, then businesses will take out more loans on their capital stock, and then they'll be able to increase the capital stock which ultimately will shift the aggregate demand curve to the right. What's really important about understanding these is that you need to be able on an FRQ to give the determinant or give the component of AD that goes along with the shift in the aggregate demand, kind of that little domino effect, if you will. Instead of just saying AD goes up, you need to say which part of aggregate demand is being affected and then explaining how that all works. So these are good ones to take note of there. So the recessionary gap is when you're below the full employment level of GDP. But an inflationary gap is just the opposite. And this is when aggregate demand is beyond the full employment level. And so the goal here is to reduce aggregate demand so that way the price level will come down and you will be at this full employment level. And so instead of increasing AD, you need to decrease AD. And that's then where you can look at the different components and it's really, you know, the opposite of what you saw on the previous page with the recessionary gap, you're doing the different parts along with it there. And so the recessionary and the inflationary gap are two really important output gaps that when you're not at full employment level, you need to think about what the government is going to do in order to influence aggregate demand and how that is going to change. And so as we talk about fiscal and monetary policy, those are some ways that we can see it. And even how the multiplier then is utilized in order to figure out the amount of government spending or taxation with fiscal policy that would be used in order to get that gap back to the full employment level.